one of the practical methods that is uh, uses a, a set of data consists of images to extract some useful information for example recognizing patterns or detecting uh, an object of interest is deep learning so what is deep learning well deep learning is one of the machine learning uh, algorithms that is uses um, uh, a neuron an artificial uh, neural neurons that uh, that is connected between each other to uh, recognize or to extract uh, some patterns uh, and uh, make decisions of course these uh, neurons uh, we have to construct them however we don't have to explicitly program every one of them the uh, the tuning this uh, neural network is a process in which we call training so so how do we uh, tune these uh, neural network well uh, every neural network is simply a value holder. Every neural will have a simple value, only a value, and these values will be uh, will 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 uh, pass on the the, uh, the value uh, its value to the next uh, neural network or the connected neural network. As it passes through uh, this uh, neural network, it will be multiplied by weight and will be summed by a value called bias. We don't control directly the value of the neural network or the actual neural. However, we directly control the weight of this um, that is going to be multiplied uh, in order to pass on to the other neural. And we, we, we actually control the bias in which simply the summation uh, added to the weight multiplied the value of this neural. So how it looks like? Well, if we have a, a data with an input value, for example, x1, x2, xc, x4, and a target value of, uh, let's say we try to classify something, so it's, it's 0 or 1, we simply add these ones to be, uh, every value will be x1, x2, xc, and x4 as, a, uh, as an input layer of uh, specific values. And these values will be passed on to some layers here, we call it hidden layers, uh, and after that, uh, of course, depending on the architecture, will be passed on to the resulting uh, layers, which is in this case, the output layers of 0 and 1. The, the hidden layers will get its value from the input layer. And after uh, we start initializing these weights and biases, after, it, uh, af after we initialize it, we will have it uh, checked if it's going to provide us the 0 and 1 we want, or there will be some error. The error we call it in this, um, or this anal analogy is we call it loss. And based on this loss, we will update our weights and biases until we get as, uh, as good as possible uh, or as, as near as possible uh, value for 0 and 1 for uh, the data we have. Now, as we said, we will multiply every uh, uh, neural network value with the weight and we sum it with the bias and we will pass it into a function. This functions, we call it activation functions. And in our neural networks, we simply uh, you, we can cho we can choose any uh, function we want. However, uh, we we need to test uh, uh, some functions in order to get uh, a good um, answer. One of the most popular uh, functions or activation functions is uh, ReLU function, in which uh, if the value is is, uh, is minus of that neural network, it will just return zero, and if the value is uh, positive it will return that value now another popular function is sigmoid function which is it has this graph that at the end it will uh, provide the output of every neural is between uh, uh, 0 and 1 as you can see it is bounded by 0 and here is 1 and another one is leaky relu which is if we have a minus value it will provide a very small leaky value a very small value this is why we call it relu and if it's uh, positive it will give 
it will provide um, the same value. So these uh, functions, however, I would say that the most uh, now commonly used is the ReLU. However, you can see uh, different uh, architectures of neural networks that they use different activation functions. Now, cost functions. Again, as we said, we will have input layer and then output layer. And the output layer is, uh, is made of values we predicted it, which is based on our weights and biases of the whole network. And we need to compare it with the values that is uh, real values. This is our, in our training data. We, we always have uh, cases. We try the input with our uh, already made uh, weights and biases. And then we will compare it with the actual output that we have. And based on that, we will calculate the loss. And the loss in, in the simplest way is we can use, uh, for example, mean square cost function, which is the, the, the same mean, squ uh, mean squared uh, error we already know from uh, previous lectures. It's as simple as uh, we uh, minus the value we predicted uh, minus our real value, and it's going to be squared. In uh, in the uh, in the uh, another value is we we call cross entropy cost function and it has a different formula that is always based on the idea of um, comparing the actual value or the expected value with the uh, sorry with the, the expected value from our network that is we predicted it based on our, our input and our current weights and biases of the network with the actual value of that training data. For example, if we're uh, comparing, uh, if we have an input layer of uh, an image of a dog, and the result was, um, we, we should be, uh, a dog should be one and the cat should be zero. If we have not, uh, if we have the opposite, that means the weight has to be updated in order to match this, uh, this output, which should give us um, a dog because the image is a dog. Now, how do we do that? Like we, we can understand that uh, in a big network, there is a huge amount of weights and biases. And well, we need to tune it. And the problem with tuning, we need uh, optimizer because of course we can tune it by ourselves, by our hands, but it's not very practical. And it's, um, I'm not sure if it's even possible. So uh, to, to, to do that, we need uh, optimizer in which we will, uh, take these parameters and we try to try to reduce the loss as much as possible. One of the uh, early and um, also used um, uh, optimizers is uh, the gradient descent. And the, the gradient descent is uh, uh, this is about simple idea that is we have um, an, a, a function uh, or we have these all these parameters and we need to check these parameters how we can always reduce the loss and as we uh, reduce the loss we uh, uh, we we change our step size for example we can start at the beginning a little bit uh, uh, big step sizes and then we start going smaller as we go of course it's 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 always um, if we have a, a bigger step size we will um, we will get to the uh, optimization value uh, quicker however if we have too small uh, but however if we have too big that we might never get to the uh, actual value because <clears throat> we can go from here to here and we will um, we will just miss the uh, minima that we are looking for to reduce the loss and we cannot also go very small because simply it it will take too much time so we need to always uh, kind of balance these uh, two things, like the step size. Um, another, um, maybe more used uh, method is the back propagation, and back, pro back, pro back uh, propagation is um, is is based on the idea of we start with uh, with. Of course, we will have the in the network with our our initial weights and biases, and we start from the output of this um, uh, network. And we go in the opposite direction. For that is, this is what we call back propagation. We start from the back of the network, and we can see the expected value we have, and what is the effect of changing these weights on 
the expected value we have. Depending on the difference that between what we can change and how we can get closer to these uh, uh, the output value, we will change the weights and biases of the uh, of of this uh, uh, network. And after that, we will uh, predict the values of the uh, the the layer just behind the um, the output layer, and we keep doing the same to the uh, layer behind it and layer behind it and so on until we get to the, uh, the to the first layer. So this is basically the idea of uh, back propagation. Of course, we have to do it for a lot of data. Uh, or patches of data, and with these patches of data, every data depend on the the the, um, the loss value. We will update the weights a little bit more, a little bit smaller, and and so on. The the overall, we should have a model that will work well for that patch, and then we will get another patch that we uh, tested, and then we update the weight and biases, and so on and so on. So we will, of course, not going to train the data in like as a whole. We will split the data into patches, and these patches uh, will go into the network, and we get trained. And with time, we will keep uh, getting closer and closer to um, uh, the lowest possible loss.